lot of times I'm driving, there's nothing to do. And I shuffle through the radio before I unglue. There's a lot of red on ways, it's traffic, I'm screwed. And I'm wired a bit different than a regular dude. It's not a bad thing, I embrace it, it's true. The radio don't stimulate brain chemistry fluid. The Buddha found nirvana and the four noble truths. Through a meditative process, right action he proved. For me, I require the use of a tool, a detector, pin, pointer, shovel, and beach scoop. I'm meant to work the dirt with my history crew, but everywhere I look, my interest taboo. Most people choose Bieber over Tippy Canoe. What does a detectorist listen to when the radio is full of bad music and news? I need an alternative for me to peruse. Beyond sight and sound gets fantastic reviews. A metal detecting show where my thought bubble brews. Thank you, Josh Kimmel, for inviting me to a detecting dork out with guests like yours, true. Lee? Are you looking for a high quality beach and sand scoop? Are you trying to take your hunting to the extreme? How about an American-based company that stands behind their product and everything they sell? Then check out our friends over at Extreme Scoops. John has been making scoops for some time now and makes a quality beach and sand scoop to take your hunting to the next level. Extreme Scoops recently released their new sand shredder that works great in the water and on the beach. And if you're a new Equinox user, you may want to check out his Surfmaster X3 that can trap those small targets you new Equinox users are finding out there. Extreme Scoop's company approach is let's do it right. So do it right, buy it once, and go to the extreme. ExtremeScoops.com that's X-T-R-E-M-E scoops dot com. Caution. Please do not operate motor vehicles or power equipment while under the influence of this show. Listening to this show could cause side effects such as bouts of laughter, violent binges of cabin fever, and even dreams of silver and gold. Please be advised. Now that the fine print is out of the way, on with the show. All right, we're back and we're live once again. You are listening to Beyond Sight and Sound, Metal Detecting and Treasure Hunting Radio for all the really cool digging people out there. And when I look into the chat, I see that Paul's in, the bills are in, ORH is first through the gate, obviously, imagine that. And it looks like he's ready for Gold Rush days. Uh, Nelson, Scott... Uh, some of the others are coming through here, Paul. Nice. Good to see. Good to see everybody drop it in. So, tonight, actually, minutes before the show, we're rushing to try and get around. We, uh, we hope we've got everything taken care of, but we've got storms rolling through the area that may cause problems. We've got some, uh, some environmental noise going on as well with, uh, Road traffic, I guess you could say. I mean, it, it sounds like uh, Lou lives right on a main drag. But uh, that's the way it goes sometimes, and, and we'll do what we can. We'll make it through it. It just shows the reality of live radio, right? So, I guess uh, we will have to bring up, maybe I can get the uh, flyer and post up about Gold Rush Days or even mention it on one of the upcoming shows. I know it's right around the corner. We've got some announcements that we need to be making as well in the very, very near future, probably right around the corner, maybe as soon as Sunday or next Wednesday. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And then, uh, yeah, we've, we've got some interesting things in store. Uh, coming up over, well, basically over the next few months on to the end of the year. So, links in the description. Our friends over at Shooters and Prospectors, Chuck Smalley, the man with the plan. Our friends at Extreme Scoops, DetectEase.com, doing a great job with the Beyond Sight and Sound Apparel. 
Our friends at XP Team USA Facebook group website podcast every other Friday when they get back from their break. They are also right here on Spreaker. Our friends at All Metal Militia Facebook group and YouTube channel. Our friends at New uh, Metal Detecting NYC Facebook and YouTube. And I think that pretty much covers all of the links that I can think of right now at this point in time. So, obviously, you've all <laughs> seen the uh, the promo. The link was getting shared around in a number of groups today. You've seen some of his go-lives or other posts in some of the groups, I'm sure. He's uh, basically kind of uh, the coin licker, the copper slayer, uh, <laughs> the, the landowner whisperer. <laughs> it's, I mean, you you guys and gals have heard of him already. It's Lucky Lou. He called in the other night when we had Steph on from Steph Diggs, and the guy just loves to have a good time. So we had to get him on the show, too, and we've got him tonight. Let's get him in here. How's it going, Lou? Uh, it's going absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Uh, that don't give me too many other names though. Dan, Danny's gonna stop busting my chops on on online. He, he says I have too many names already. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll just stick with Lucky Lou. <laughs> right. I and I think I I do believe I did put the coin Licka in the uh, title tonight. So I I probably don't convey the accent near as well as you in the text, but. Uh, it's it's up there. It's a coin licker. Right, and I I see you've been you're still posting up a number of videos licking those coins. Well, if it's a silver coin, it's got to be cleaned properly. So it's it just it's just natural. I mean, I don't I didn't even know when I started doing that, but I just started doing it, and now it's it's. It's just something I do. Some people say I'm going to get worms and stuff, and say I shouldn't do it, but. I just do it anyway. Why not? <laughs> right, it's uh, it's kind of your trademark, your signature now at this point. <laughs> Listen, it was so awesome last night. I'm on on Facebook looking at some stuff, and Brian from my uh, awesome relics posts posts a bunch of different stuff and videos. He found his first Bob a dime, and uh, so I commented, "Did you clean that properly?" And he said, "Ah, oh. he says, you know, I didn't get a video of it, but." I got a video of this, and he, he found, like, a silver charm. And it's of him, and he, he even said in the video, this one's for you, Lou. <laughs> he puts it in his mouth. <laughs> and he spit this, he, he's, see, I always forget to spit out the dirt, so I end up swallowing it because I just, I just forget. And uh, he spit out this nasty dirt out of his mouth after. <laughs> oh, I was dying. I was laughing. But, hey, you know. I I. I don't know why, but I, I got to bring it up. Do you remember a few years back, it seemed like the big thing at the time, especially around Halloween, were the Harry Potter jelly beans? No, I don't. I, I have three daughters, so I, they never got into the Harry Potter. Oh, well, they used to have, uh, well, maybe they still do. I don't know. But they had these Harry Potter jelly beans. <clears throat> That uh, you had to look at the bag because the jelly beans would look very similar. And the back of the bag would show you what flavors they were. And depending on what you grabbed, you may have gotten a decent flavor. Or you may have gotten the one that tastes like rotten egg. Or vomit. Or dirt. Mystery jelly beans. Yeah. 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 And I got to tell you that... They uh, they were having fun. They're like, here, try this one, try this one. And they handed me a couple of the dirt ones, and I tried them. And I'm like, you know, I I really hate to have to be the one to admit to this, but I know what dirt tastes like. And yep, those you know are very it. close to what dirt tastes <laughs> like. Listen, every uh, and, and it all pretty much tastes the same. You know, I, I can't. I can't say that uh, it, it's actually tasted any different each time. So, <laughs> but hey, it just means you found another silver coin, now, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, for me, I'll take silver coming out of the ground anytime. I'm. I'm always happy to see it. 
You know, and I think the first time I did it was I didn't actually have any water on me. And I was like, oh, I got to see how this thing cleaned right, up. And I'm I just dying to see what it looks I like. It, I just stuck it in my mouth. And, you know, why? Well, if it, spit has all these germs and, you know, it, <laughs> it actually cleans stuff really good. So, <laughs> but probably not a good idea to be sticking too many copper coins in your mouth. No, I don't, I don't, I don't actually, I've never actually stuck a copper in my mouth. So, you know, I, people, people ask if I, if, if that one in my mouth, I said, nope, can't put <laughs> copper in your mouth. Right. A gold, a gold coin, however, <laughs> listen, I might suck on that thing for a good 10 minutes, you know, cause it's gold. I mean, <laughs> why not? Right. Yeah. Treat that thing like a Jolly Rancher or something. <laughs> <laughs> Carry it around the rest of the day. Don't accidentally swallow it. No, no, probably, probably not a good idea. Although it can still be recovered. Yes, it can. It's not yeah. easy, but you can find it. When when I hit that uh, when I hit that Indian last night, that thing was so caked in dirt that honestly, it was about three times, two to three times the thickness of a coin, and I'm going. Yeah, I ain't doing nothing with that. That thing's just going in a container, and I'll deal with it when I get home. I ain't, I ain't trying to run water over it. I sure ain't throwing it in my mouth. Well, the thing is with coppers, though, you want to dry them out. You know, you take, I've, I've, you know, I see people asking all the time and stuff, and and different cleaning methods, and uh, you know, a few people have been doing it for a long time. You know, they just they let it dry out, toothpick it room temperature peroxide with a q-tip that's it and then uh you know i bought i didn't buy the renaissance wax i brought a same size tub it's basically renaissance wax with a different label that was half the price and um you know and and once it once it dries out after that you just wax it up and and that's all i had a couple people ask me the last couple coins i posted you know how i clean them and i learned by experimenting and and just uh just asking people that have lots of lots of years of experience doing it and and seeing stuff that they've cleaned stuff yeah like absolutely hairspray right yeah. yeah i've seen <clears throat> i've seen some that like to use the hairspray some like to use uh, uh if, if paraffin or wax and and uh Heck, I I know of a number of people that if they find something out in the field that looks like it's going to clean up nice, they'll pack it back in with some of the original dirt to get it back home yeah. until they can give it more attention, or cover it with some uh, some chapstick. Yep, yeah, anything to seal it until you can get it get it home to clean it. I'm still learning that process. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's. It's an, it seems like it's a never ending education because you got to treat them all with a case by case basis. Uh, some of them, I mean, realistically, the, the battle's already over before you even get it out of the ground. Yeah, those but, are the ones uh, you throw in the electrolysis just to see what they look like afterwards. Right. Yeah, exactly. Good experimental coins for the electrolysis unit. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. I've I've done about five or six coppers now, and you know, it's just if they're if they're pretty toasty, you know, why not put them in just to see what it could possibly look like if you put a nice one in, you know, before you just ruin a nice one. So oh, yeah, yeah, I can remember a few years ago I had dug up a coin out in a curb strip, and the thing was it was so corroded, I would have bet money that it was a zinc penny. <clears throat> so I'm I'm scratching across it with the the edge of my my digging tool, trying to pop some of this corrosion loose to see what it is. I still can't tell anything. I bring it in, I put it in electrolysis for a little bit, and that's when I happen to notice the shield on the back of the Indian. I'm going, nice. oh my god! I can't believe I was just scratching on that with the edge of a a predator tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, live and learn. Live and learn. But, you know, I mean, realistically, by the time I found it and recovered it, it, there was no saving that coin anyway. So it was interesting to run it through electrolysis and see what I could do. It did help it. I was able to identify it, but it was still worthless. 
Yeah, and if you make your own electrolysis machine, make sure you use the right uh, DC supply adapter. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Otherwise, things tend to uh, disappear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you ruin stuff real quick. I, I learned that one the hard way. You know, I, I didn't use the right power supply, and and uh, I, I super boiled water in a matter of maybe three minutes and completely disintegrated the top layer of the medallion I was cleaning. So, yeah, slow and low, definitely the best way to go with electrolysis. Yeah. Speaking of slow and low, uh, the new site that I've been, the new permission that I got. Yes, I just went up, knocked on the door, and he said, "Okay, go, go for it." So, uh, but I, I, you know, I, I went over it with the AT Pro with the stock coil, and uh, I mean, I, I dug tons and tons of stuff, and the front yard is all 200 plus year old, 220 something year old dirt, whatever. But the back has a lot of fill in it. And so I, I started concentrating more on the front again because it was so much iron in it. I switched to the little 5x8 SEF detect coil that I got when I bought my detector. I never used it before. And uh, I've pulled five coins now the last few times I've been there, and all of them have had two to five nails. One one of them had a huge, like, four or five-inch long you know, square nail, big chunk and square nail in with the cop. That was that. That was the uh, 1794 token that I found. You know, wow. and, and I mean, there was all these little bits of square nails and everything, all in that same hole with that that token. And and so it's it's if you don't have a small coil and and you do dig in, like especially around houses, old houses. Um, I, I would say go get one and go right back to those houses if you were finding. If you were finding other stuff with with a bigger coil, you want to, because I can't think of how many houses that I've dug around that, you know, 17, early 1800s that there's nails everywhere, but the stock coil wouldn't pick it up. But that smaller one, it just, it just picks apart, you know, the, the, the differences. Absolutely. I used to run one of those little uh, butterfly coils on the E-track and them things are just hell on wheels in heavy trash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's insane. Like uh, yesterday, I got I got an 1803 uh, drape bust that I I didn't pick up with the stock coil, and then six inches away was a, a 1903 Indian head, and there was a few nails, you know, within that vicinity. Two, uh, a couple were right in the same hole as the the drape bust, and it just it's just simply amazing, you know. Can just Absolutely. keep going over the. Si- Keep going over the same land and just keep finding stuff. I mean, I found a 1890 seated dime the other day, and it had a few nails in the hole. Um, I found three coppers, that token, and that seated dime, all all with nails. Wow. So. Well, it, it just goes to show you, sometimes it's a different coil, a different machine, a different angle, maybe even different settings, and you still wind up squeaking finds out of a place that you thought you may have covered pretty thoroughly. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna find out Saturday. I'm gonna go over there for a, a little while Saturday and and uh, hit it hit it really slow and and uh, see what else see what else can come out of the dirt. Nice, nice. So I guess uh, why don't you let everybody know that may not know how you got started in the hobby, how long you've been doing the hobby, and what you're running. So I've been detecting roughly eight years. The first six years, uh, just casual. My kids were younger. I'd go to parks and, and, you know, fields, you know, public, public land more or less and found clad and not, nothing spectacular. And, uh, I always wanted a detector though. And my, when diggers came out, it was it, my mother and father in law had come over and uh, I said, Hey dad, check out, check out this, this TV show. And, you know, and he's laughing and he says, you should get one. And my wife said, yeah, you should get one. So, you know, you got, you got the permission from the wife. It's on like Donkey Kong. So <laughs> I, I think I, I, I'm not sure if I ordered it that night or the next day, but I got an Ace 250 and I used that for, you know, the first six years. And I mean, I found tons and tons of stuff with it. Nothing old that, you know, I didn't really do research and all that stuff. And, and um, when we moved out of the city into the small town we live in now, um, I went out and got an Ace 400. It was crazy. The first permission that I knocked on here in town, first farm, 
They said yes. The first hole I dug was an 1853 seated quarter, and and it was that was it. It was it was all over. That was that was September of 2017, and so we're coming up on September of 19. So, two years I've been grooving, you know, pretty hardcore as far as as detecting goes. And uh, but before that, there was so many people that I I knocked on their doors and they said no. And so it, you know, and I never got discouraged. I was like, whatever, you know, just go to the next door, go to the next door. And uh, but there was so many no's and stuff, and so. You know, I don't know, maybe after that, that long a time getting all those no's and stuff and then moving and talking to, you know, people somewhere else, I, I, I like, I'd say 95% of the time I get yeses now. And so uh, when, when you were getting all the no's, this is when you still lived in the city, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do you think that the, the change in location was a, a big uh, benefit as far as gaining your permissions or was it more that you kind of evolved yourself in the way you were presenting it when you were approaching homeowners or what? Well, I, I started doing a lot more research um, as far as sites in and around town and, you know, bordering towns and stuff like that. And, and, uh, you know when you can you know when you can walk up to somebody's house and 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 say oh yeah so and so lived here 150 years ago or or this happened here or you know any any type of historical nature to their actual property um and and knowing their name and everything before you even knock on the door uh you know it 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 helps a lot with conversation um i mean i've always been good at talking with people and and stuff like that uh, you know i sold cards and comics when i was 13 at a flea market by myself you know, I worked for a guy for like for like four years. I did that, you know, and uh, and so, you know. But I don't know. I think small. I think smaller towns people are a lot more friendly too. I mean, you'll get one here and there that you know might say, "Get off my property," but you just brush it off and you go to the next one. And uh, I mean, like I said, I I I. I I didn't really change much as far as, you know, going up and, and knocking other than doing more research on properties and stuff like that. And, um, you know, in town, I, I have 50, you know, the last couple of years I had like 12,000 and 15,000 Christmas lights on my house during December. And wow. so everybody, everybody knows who I am. So like when I go knock on a door in town, I'd be like, yeah, I live at the Christmas lighthouse and they'll be like, Oh, that's you, blah, blah, blah. And, and, you know, and so it's a good intro type, you know, yeah, that's, this is, this is me. This is where I live type thing. Um, right. It's just going, yeah, I know where you live. I saw that on Google last winter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, so, you know, and, and it's just, I don't know. I'm friendly. Um, I'm honest to the point, you know, I don't beat around the bush and, I've given tons and tons of stuff to different homeowners and, and, you know, any, anything like when, when I show people stuff, if, if they find fascination in something, you know, I'll bring it home, take pictures and I'll just, I'll bring it back to them next time I go there and, and give it to them. And, uh, and, and, you know, it, they love it. You know, they might, like one guy found a mini ball, you know, he had a, like a Civil War little camp in his, in his farm field. You know, when they were getting ready to ship off, they, they were, there was some guys, I guess, camping out in the field. And he always said that. And I hadn't found really, I found uh, a couple of two cent pieces and, and stuff that could have possibly been dropped by him. But, and then I found a mini ball and, uh, and like he was, he was ecstatic about it, you know. And, and so I just, I took some, took some pictures of it and stuff and said, here you go. And, and he, he didn't even care about the two cent pieces. He cared more about the mini ball, you know. And so it's, it's, it's odd what some, some homeowners like more than others and stuff like that. And, um, a lot of, a lot of people, like I got, I had Copper Hill. I went in there with like six coppers and like all these other buckles and buttons and all this stuff. And I'm showing it all. It's super ecstatic. And he's like, I said, do you want any of this? And he's like, no, I, I got enough crap in my house. I don't need any more. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so. So from that point on, I went and showed him and didn't have to worry about him taking anything because he didn't want anything. So, but, but yeah, so I mean, that, you know, since, since we moved, since we moved and, uh, that first farm permission that I got, it's just been super fun. I mean, 
up until this year, though, I'd only found a total of 18 or 19 coppers. And, you know, to find 59 so far this year is just, is insane. You know, it's just insanity. And right. uh, I just hope I can c- continue and just keep getting permissions and going out and having fun and meeting people. And I mean, that's, I didn't even, I detected by myself for so long. And, uh, you know, I was telling my wife, I said, you know, I, I, I gotta, I gotta start getting out with some people here. I, I was detecting with this one guy, but like he worked all weekend and then we could never meet up. And so it was very sparse detecting with each other. But when we did, it was so much fun. I mean, like it, it was just a million times funner than, than doing it by yourself. And so. It was, uh, I don't know, over a year ago. I just, I started looking on Facebook for groups in a club or, you know, just something to start communicating with, with people who, who did it and enjoyed it as much as I did. And, uh, and I found like Awesome Relics New England and a couple other groups and, you know, joined, I, I joined two clubs now and, I mean, it's just so much fun getting together with people. And, and I mean, I wish I could take everybody to every permission that I, I get, you know, but some, some landowners literally are like, you know, you're the only person who can come. And it's, it's like a dagger in the heart, you know, it's right. like, oh, come on. You know, yeah. Just, sometimes they can be quite receptive, but they don't want a lot of other people on the property. Nope, nope. It's it's like, and, and it's, a lot of them are in town where it's I'm from the same town. You know, they don't want you know people from somewhere else coming in. I, I don't know. Maybe it's a small town mentality. Who knows? But um, but yeah, you know. So so I try to I try to you know get together with as many people as I can and uh, and and just have fun out there. You know, it's never it's never a competition. Like I'd never kept track of anything i've ever found um i just labeled it and put it in a you know coin book or my buttons are all just sort of strewn across a shelf and uh, (laughs) i mean i got like 100 i don't know 120 150 buttons and they're all just sort of getting quadruple stacked leaning on the back of this this you know four or five foot long shelf and i just love them and uh you know but but the my my biggest thing is is when I invite somebody to a site is that they actually find cool stuff and I don't care if I do, you know if they're gonna drive to somewhere where I invite them to I want I want the person or people that are going to find you know to find everything and I and I don't I don't care if I do or not because I'm gonna have fun either way you know and right. so. So, so for you, in a sense, a lot of times it's it's the uh, the company and the uh, camaraderie rather than yes. the find Share, sharing the excitement. You know, you find you know you find something. I mean, you could find a, a twenty dollar gold piece by yourself. What are you gonna do? Right. You, you know, right. like honestly, what are you gonna do? You find a twenty dollar gold piece with one or ten people. You can be running around in circles and and. You know, I mean, I might do that anyway, but nobody's there to see it except for the animals. And, and so, you know, but it, yeah, to share that excitement, sit down, have a break, chit chat, talk, talk about what you found, you know, different, just different things like, oh man, you know, I got this awesome sound. It was this piece of crap though, or, you know, just, just anything, anything like that. I mean, it's the people, the people that I've met is probably the best thing that I've found in this, this hobby so far, without a doubt. Uh, you know, I, I I heard about this bone dig thing. I'd never been to a an event before. And so I'm like, oh bone dig, you know. So I called up I called up and I was like, Yeah, I want one of these tickets, you know, I can only do it one day and so so I went up for the first day where KG and Ringy are gonna be there and, and uh so I just posted on Awesome Relics, you know, hey anybody want a carpool? And and you know, Dig Dug was like, Yeah, I'll, I'll carpool, you know, we'll meet up and I'd never met the guy before. I hopped right in his car, drove up, to, you know, had no, didn't even care. I was like, oh, that was some strange. I'll just, I'll go drive with him. You know? Right. And, never, never even gave it a thought that this could be the making of a serial killing or anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, who cares? And so, uh, you know, but I went up, to, we, we talked for, you know, an hour plus or whatever on the drive and hit it off good. And, you know, I, 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 uh, I met, I met Ken Dig up there and Steph and Laura and, 
Aaron and I mean a whole bu- you know a whole bunch of people and everything and it was there was just so much fun and uh, and so you know that uh, that that was the beginning of of greatness and you know well uh, most of us are going to pound the ground up in Swansea so that that should be awesome I'm, you know can't wait for that that's that's I guess they got over 800 detectorists already for that so that should be should be a good time um, wow you know but just just along the way you know just meeting different people and stuff and you know having having digging with different people it, it's just it's just fun right I do see where Steph's in the chat and she says yeah Lou talks to himself as well and she smells Silver for Saturday. Yeah, well, she she's thinking that uh, some some type of you know I don't know drape silver or something. I don't know. She, <laughs> she might have been she might have been eating shrooms earlier. I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, hey, anything's possible though. You know, anything's possible. You know, Dig Dig Dug said he's going to uh, swing up in the evening. Uh, one one evening, there's like I don't know three quarters of an acre that's just overgrown grass and like mini mini, you know, weeds or whatever. Um, we're going to weed whack the crap out of it and uh, and see if we can find anything over there. You know. Oh, nice. Uh, there you go. Yeah, bring the guy in with the equipment to lower all that grass. Yeah, I just talked to the homeowner yesterday. He said, "Go for it." I said, "All right, we're going to go for it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna take probably an hour or two of uh, shredding, shredding stuff and everything. But it's it, you know, with all the stuff that I found in front of the house and beside the house, where that was all the original ground, all the stuff that's overgrown is not landfill. It's all original ground as well, and it's just it's to the oh, right wow. of the driveway. You know, so I mean, it's got to have something cool on it. So, oh yeah, you know it. it. It's just getting that grass shortened and everything, getting that growth cut down so you can get in there. Maybe, uh, maybe Doug can switch off of his seventeen-inch coil then for a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if he just that. If maybe he should put razor blades on the side of that snowshoe and and just start <laughs> swinging. Yeah, to right. clear it out in no time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so. I see we've got our friend Steve Zuzulik in the chat. Good, good to. The- Good to see Canada in the house there. He's he's going to be doing another book signing soon. I believe I shared it on my timeline uh, earlier today. For those that don't know it, or you can check Steve's timeline as well. For uh, it's a it's another book signing for his new book, The Ring Finder. Good book so far. Oh, yeah. from what I've Making read. a profit detecting. <laughs> I, just, I just I just saw that. I, I I'm an NFP, not for profit. I've never, I've never ever sold one item that I've found. I, I just, I don't know. I couldn't do it. Give right. it all to my kid. Give it all to my kids when I die. Well, I, I have not sold anything either. But uh, you know, when it comes to ring recoveries, I won't turn down a reward either. No, no. But I mean, it, it, it feels good to to do a good deed like that, though you know, and 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 oh, make absolutely. Some, yeah, I mean, you make somebody's day, make somebody's year by finding you know a lost wedding ring or what have you. I mean, I actually have a I have a permission in town that the the woman, the the husband was moving like boulders and stuff on their property, and he gives her his, he had a triple band gold wedding ring. It was a uh, white, yellow, and rose gold. And, uh, she, she, she was doing gardening like up by the road and like a couple other areas and she lost it 30 years ago. Oh, and so, uh, you know, I, when I got permission, I always ask, that's one of the things I always ask is anybody who ever lost anything, you know, on the property, you know, that, that I might want to be looking for. And, uh, and so, you know, she she told me the story about it, and I was like, oh, I bet you he wasn't happy with you at that day. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I searched some of it. Um, the, they have a low-lying land, and I was only there in the spring, and, and it was like a swamp. It was so wet, and, and I mean, you couldn't even walk. You'd sink five inches in the in the grass and, and stuff. And and so I'm waiting to the fall when, when some of the stuff starts dying off, and, and uh, you know, I might I might bring somebody there with me. You know that has a different machine than I do, just so 
we can uh, we can do some scanning. Um, it's in one of the oldest parts of my town, one of the original you know old roads. I found a couple of uh, coppers in our land. A few, I, I found a thimble spill, three thimbles in the same hole. That was kind of neat. That's but interesting. I was, but it, it was, it's funny because when you're doing something like that, you know, I'm, I'm figuring a triple gold band is going to ring up probably about a 58 on the AT Pro. So I'm getting excited every single thing that's dinging, you know, between 55 and 60. I'm like, oh, this could be it. This could be it. This could be it. And so I'm, I'm excited digging pull tabs and stuff. And, you know, because it's a possibility that it could be the, the, the you know, 30 year lost ring. I mean, that's to find that for somebody would be just so awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It is, too. And, uh, wow, Connecticut Todd drops into the chat. Welcome aboard, buddy. What's up, Todd? Todd doesn't like it when I put the silvers in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, he, he's kind of an advocate of not doing that. Uh, yeah, I do see, uh, though, he says hello, Lou. <laughs> uh, we, have, we, have fun. we have fun playing with each other, though. Oh, yeah, Todd is... The guy is just such a great guy and a wealth of information, too, if people listen. Yeah. One day I'll get out digging with him. Oh, you've you've not had the opportunity to dig with him yet, huh? No. Nope. My, my goal is to try to get out and dig with everybody at least once. Well, <laughs> I don't, there you go. I don't, care, I don't care who it is, you know, where it is, I'll, you know... It's just it's, it's it's a very time consuming hobby though. It, it's you know it can be yeah yeah. And there's only there's only so much time in a day and in a week and and it just goes by so fast and like weeknights I might get out for a half hour, forty five minutes, an hour, you know, every night, every other night, stuff like that. But it's hard to to meet up with somebody to be able to do that on a spur of the moment, you know, um, type thing, and so. Typically Saturdays are my digging days and Sunday's family day and then weeknights are just whenever you know, whenever I can get out uh, Right, close, you close gotta night, I you gotta find that balance, so to speak, with everything else in life. I mean I'd the way the weather is, I'd probably even be out digging this evening too, uh like yesterday and the day before, but had a show to do, so I figured, well, we'll maybe we can dig tomorrow again. Yeah. Yep, just just go out digging longer tomorrow. That's all. I'll make up for that time. <laughs> I see. I see Todd in the chat saying Lou doesn't listen. <laughs> what did he say? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so I take it he's he's made the comment more than a couple of times to you about uh, throwing yeah, coins I could in your die mouth and worms and. You know, all that other stuff. I, I I said, listen, all the dirt I ate in my life so far, you know, I, I, I should have died a long time ago, I'm thinking. <laughs> well, it, it sounds like you still got plenty of digging to do. I mean, you're on a roll, an absolute roll with coppers this year. Yeah, yeah, I've been pretty lucky, pretty fortunate, you know. Um, I, I mean, it's... It's always fun pulling a copper out of the ground. I actually, that, that 1794 uh, Talbot alum Lee token that I found, I, I like more than almost any copper I've found this year. I, it's it's just unique and, and cool, different. I never, I, I only saw one in my, you know, my coin book. I never seen one posted or anything like that. So, so that was, you know, that was pretty cool. Um you know, state coppers. I thought I was excited about my jersey copper I just found the other day. Then Dave Dave Wise pulls out a freaking jersey copper that looks like it, it was in somebody's pocket for, you know, the last two hundred years. The thing is such in such nice condition. And I'm just like, man, that, that puts mine to shame right there. <laughs> right. So. You know, but but state coppers are fun to find. Um, you know, I, I was dying to find a mass and the only mass copper I found is just it's you can barely make it out, and and I'd love to find a nicer one, um, you know. But I, I was just ecstatic, even even just finding a mass copper because I had already found a a Vermont, a couple of Vermonts and Connecticut's and stuff. And I, I you know, that was that was January first this year. I, I went out 
I went out picking through the uh, the the ice earth, and uh, and I found the the mass cop of this the the first January first. It was so awesome. I said this is going to be a good year, and it's been a good year so far. Yeah, what a way to start the year off. And those mass coppers, they they look so cool. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're, they're beautiful coins, you know. Um, but but I mean. One of the nicest condition ones I just found recently was that the, I got the 1842 Lodgy, and and it just it looks like it freaking was just minted. I mean, there's there's just nothing wrong with it. And so when you when you clean the dirt off of something like that, and like it's just you get that little little bit of a wow factor. Um, you know the I did find a 1650s French Liad that's pretty smoked, but. That was that was exciting to find. You know, I thought it was a button with no shank on it at first, and and uh, I seen the was it the Fleur de Lis on it, and I was just like, I don't know if this is a button or. And so I I, I sent the picture to Steph, and she's like, "That's a French Liad," and I was like, "That's what," because somebody had somebody had just, somebody had just found one like a, a week or two prior and posted a picture, and I I I I just brain farted, and you know that happens a lot though. It, it just, seems like you refer to Steph for uh, consultation. Book, I guess you could say on a number of finds. She's a book of knowledge. She 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 knows she knows a lot of stuff. And I you know I I I message Dave as well since I've met him on on some stuff as far as they always respond fast. Um, you know. Oh they, yeah. They, I, don't, I don't know if they got their notifications turned on or not, but they they typically will respond fairly quick and. Uh, well, I'll just throw it on like awesome relics, you know, if I if I don't know what I'm what it is or something to that effect. And typically, you know, within 10 minutes, you'll get an answer. Like if I'm out in the middle of a field or yard or something and I just I just want to know. I'll, uh, I, I actually typically won't actually write what's a day without digging. I'll just I'll, I'll write. Uh, I need info. <laughs> <laughs> right. Here it is. Help. <laughs> Which. Yep. Apparently, Steph says she's the one that had posted one recently before you found yours. Ah, uh, see, see that. Well, see, so I contacted the correct person because she had the fresh knowledge of such item. Exactly, <laughs> and uh, she even was able to ID here recently. You found another quite nice button that she was able to ID, but she wasn't going to tell you, I guess. Ah. Uh. That was torture. That like <laughs> the only the only item I've ever found that gave me goosebumps and you know, we I mean we we were digging all day and uh and you know, I pull out the button and you know, I don't I think it was like eight, nine inches deep, whatever whatever it was and, and uh and I'm I, I rub it off and I seen the Roman numeral nine and I'm like, Oh man, this gotta be something cool. So I go walking over to Steph. And uh, I said, Steph, Steph, you gotta, you know, you gotta tell me this is a cool button. And so she looks at it and she goes, I'm not telling you what it is. I said, Oh, so you know what it is? Yeah, but I'm not gonna tell you. And I was like, Come on, no, you gotta tell, go ask Dave. And I'm like, Dave's <laughs> way over there. You're gonna make me walk. I already walked over to you. Now you're gonna make me walk over to him. And she's like, Yep, I'm not telling you what it is. So I walk over to Dave and I show it to him, and he's like, his face was like, Whoa, you know, and and uh, and. And he's just like, that's a regiment button. That's a ninth regiment button. You know, I don't know if it's American or British, but that's, you know, that's a Revolutionary War, Brit, you know, button. And and uh, and and when he said that, you know, I got I got goosebumps all over me because that's probably my favorite thing to find is buttons. I, 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 you know, I don't care if they're just plain Jane buttons or you know fancy dancy ones, but I, you know, I, I love finding buttons. And uh, and so. So, you know, come to find out, it, you know, it was it was uh, one of the prisoners. It was a British 9th Regiment button. It was uh, from Burgoyne, General Burgoyne's army, one of the prisoners, you know, that was held at this prison camp, you know, most likely fell off of their clothing. And so so it, it makes it even it makes it even cooler knowing exactly where it came from. And, oh, absolutely. Uh, I love finding the story behind the find, so to speak. You know, how, what is it? How did it get there? Can we show or document or provide provenance to who it belonged to? That's and what, ma what makes it even better is I, I had a, I, my birthday was at the end of July 
and I got a new permission. So I was like, ah, you know what? Let me see if I can get hook up, you know, seven, eight diggers here. And, and the guy said, yeah. So I'm like, screw it. I'll use my birthday as a reason to get all these people together. So, so I had a birthday <laughs> day. And, uh, you know, because somebody might have said, oh, I can't make it. But because it's my birthday, they were like, oh, yeah, I got to go now. You know, so uh, so I had people from Vermont, Western Mass, Connecticut all come up and everything. And uh, and Steph, Steph says, oh, you know, I, I need – I need you to bring that button, and uh, I need some some extra footage on it for my video, my YouTube coming up. I'm like, all right, cool. So we get there, and you know, everybody shows up, and I says, hey, here's your button. You know, let's go. Let I want to. I want. Let's all get out there and start digging. And uh, and so she's like, all right, hold on. So she comes out, and she's got this little gift box with some uh, some couple funny memes on it and stuff. And she made me, you know, a little one item gift box that's got a background of like revolutionary war action going on and it says you know ninth threat british ninth regiment button on it the date and where it was found and everything and a little spot for it so you know that was that was a pretty cool little gift that she <coughs> made me. and then uh you know it just made ma- made it so that my little button display is even nicer um and then Ken- kendall kendig uh made me some lucky lo- the 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 sticker that you have <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was a surprise too, because like you know, I don't need I don't need people getting me stuff or nothing for my birthday, whatever. I don't I don't expect nothing. And uh, so when he he gave me like this handmade card and it had the sticker on, it, I opened it up. There's like 20 of them in it, and I was like, oh, that is so awesome. That's like just perfect, you know. So so it's it a screen blue. <laughs> oh, it does. It definitely does, you know. But uh Danny Danny actually posted a thing saying it needed a little dirt in the teeth on it though. Yeah. <laughs> I posted a video and uh you know, when I took the coin out of my mouth I was smiling or whatever and I had all this dirt all over my teeth. And uh, you know, they were all picking on me and I loved it. <laughs> well still that's that's very cool that she uh presented you with the nice uh display box for it yeah yeah it was awesome I'll, I'll have it forever you know with with my favorite you know my favorite button i've ever found uh now i got a cool display for it right so so, so that is by far then your favorite uh is, is that just your favorite button or your favorite find altogether uh, it's, it's probably, well, I did find a, I mean, I found a 1770s coin silver spoon that was made by Abijah Northy in Salem, Mass. It's a four and a quarter, four and a half inch spoon. Um, it has a monogram possibly of one of the first inhabitants of, of my town. And so wow. that, that to me is like I, I tried to over the winter I tried to I contacted a couple of museums and the local historical societies and stuff to see if they have the log books from Abijah Northy and they didn't have anything on them and uh, and so because I wanted to try to match up the the monogram to the people who would have purchased them from him and uh, so now I can, all I can do is you know say it was either you know Daniel Woodard or David Winch possibly and. Uh, but I mean, that just when I pulled that out of the ground, it was just it looks it's just so awesome. And so between that and the button, those are probably my favorite, you know, two things I've I've ever found. Yeah, uh-huh. I mean the like the thimbles, the buttons, they're they're kind of personal items. But I don't know, coin silver spoon like that 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 seems to kind of take it to a whole other level. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely you know it wasn't. It, I found so many spoons that have been mangled, bent, destroyed. You know, bowls all shredded apart. This thing had nothing, nothing wrong with it. You know, other than the wear of of the of the bowl of being used. It had, you know it just it didn't get damaged in the field at all. And so that you know that was it was it was pretty cool. Nice. Um, I did just I just I, speaking of thimbles, I just recently found a thimble. Um, <clears throat> that, uh, you know, it says, it says on it, sc- scribed on it, uh, Jamie to Maggie. And so I don't know if it was like a mother to a daughter, you know, um, grandmother to granddaughter. It could have been Jamie. It could have been a guy and, and a husband to a wife. So, uh, that was found at the, the, the newest site I'm digging at. And 
So I'm, I'm going to try and do some research on previous owners from, you know, the early mid 1800s and stuff like that. But it's a solid, solid silver uh, thimble. Oh, and, nice. Was it in good shape? Oh, it's all, yeah, it's a, it's mint, you know, it, nice. it didn't get it's not crushed at all or anything. So, you know, so it'd be, it'd be cool. Um, you know, if I, if, if, if it's actually to somebody in town, the, the spot, the place I'm digging at used to be the original common, um, for, for the town because the main street used to go up this road and now it doesn't. And so, I mean, it could have been somebody who lived in the house, but it could have been from anybody stopping by the town common as well. Um, so it might it might make it hard to to figure out who it went to and stuff like that. But you know, over time, I'll, I'll do some digging and stuff like that. And, you know, if, if perchance it's it actually is a relative of somebody who's like living in town right now, you know, I'm going to be going knocking on that door and saying, Hey, I got this from your great grandmother, or great, great, great grandmother or something like that, you know, cause that would just be cool to do. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever thought about, uh, maybe donating or, uh, loaning some of your finds to say local museum or historical society? Well, I belong to my historical society and I, I last couple, they don't have too many meetings over the, the summer, but, uh, the last one I went to, I was talking to either possibly making a display to put in our library or, uh, or, you know, doing some type of museum, you know, thing, um, where, where people can actually, see all the stuff uh little a little easel type display at the library might might get the most viewing um because our historical society is like way on the outskirts of town so you know people when when there's meetings and stuff would be the only time people could see stuff and so i did i did set up at the um in the in june and then in september they have uh, a big like fair thing two different events in town and so i set up with the historical society this this past june and uh, with a bunch of detecting stuff just from town and uh there was so many i i got more people talking to me and stuff over the whole entire historical society display you know and so so it was cool you know because I, I didn't bring anything that i found outside of town it was just all just local stuff and so but yeah you know i i I went. I actually went down to Salem this past Saturday, and uh, I didn't talk to anybody in charge or anything. But uh, I was. I actually brought that spoon, um, you know, because I was. I was gonna. I was gonna loan it to the to the museum down there, the Essex Peabody Museum. Right, it's right in downtown Salem, and uh, but there there was nobody there that that could even do anything like that. So. So I might shoot him an email and, and, you know, but that's something that I, I might loan to him. Nice. And it looks like Steph says coin silver spoon means that it was silver meant for your mouth. And that's why you like that so much. <laughs> hey, you know, subliminally, that might be it. <laughs> <laughs> And I believe uh, Todd's mentioning that I I think it's the thimble he's referring to that it may have been a gift from a husband to a wife uh, commemorating the birth of a child, possibly. That would be cool, you know. That's that you know, and and I mean, heck, find out who the child was and uh, see if they have any relatives in town and give it give it to them, you know. <laughs> Oh, I got plenty, that, that I got plenty cool. of pictures of it. Yeah, that would definitely be cool. Yeah, that's that's something else. I mean, the the finds they they come and go. Uh, you know, maybe you give them to someone, you you pass them down, or in some rare circumstances, unfortunately, maybe they get stolen. But you've still got the memories. You've still got the photos. Exactly. Yeah, I've actually I found uh, nine or ten in my own yard. My house was built in 1824, 1825. Um, and uh, in my yard, I found either nine or ten AOUW medals. They're, I don't know, an inch and a half circular. 
and it's uh, Ancient Order United Workmen. It was like an all all white men's working union before there was unions from 1850 to 1890s, and um, so. They had like a the medallion part, but then there was another part that would have had like a ring that went to it where the where the a ribbon clip was on the backside, and then there was a top part where the a ribbon would have been hung in between. So it was a three piece medallion, and uh, I've only found I think three complete uh, parts to it because the top pieces have eluded me, and I found so many of the bottom ones. But I donated one to the historical society in town because they actually have a flag of of that the medallion the symbol on the medallion they have a flag of it so that's displayed at the historical society um and then i've given them away i I think i have three left now i've given like seven away um you know just because it's cool you know neat part of history and stuff and you know people people like them so i got i got enough of them i was like i don't need i don't need nine or ten of them so Right. <clears throat> now, were were they all, you said you had donated one and you gave some away to your buddies or whatever, where I, I kind of sense with having that many of them, some of them may have been experimented with. Yeah, that was the first thing that I did electrolysis with. Um, you know, they're like copper-coated brass, but they were all nasty and stuff. And, and uh, you know, I used an AC adapter instead of a uh, DC and uh, I melted the the copper plating right up, right off it down to the brass in a matter of minutes. And, wow! Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So so that was that was the first thing I I experimented with the electrolysis because I had so many of them. I was like, you know what? If if I ruin one, I guess I have more. <laughs> right. Well, lesson learned there, definitely. <laughs> yep. And it so looks. It's- Looks like one of them may have possibly been given to Steph. Yeah, I think I gave Steph one, Dave one. I gave my father-in-law one, the Historical Society one. Um, I can't remember who else I gave them to. I've given, I've given, a, I've given, like I said, I think six, six or seven of them away. Nice. Now, what do you think they? Why the? Uh... The concentration of them in your yard, because uh, you said yeah. you found like nine or ten of them. Well, there must have been like like a Masonic lodge would have been where there's somebody in charge or something to that effect. There must have been somebody who lived, you know, here that was in charge, or they had meetings here. I mean, they, it's a possibility that they, you know, they used to they could have had meetings here, and because tell, tell them whose house is. And they, uh, they, I mean, they, they all over the yard, over by the, by my driveway in a turnabout. I think I found five or so though over there. Um, and there's a huge burn spot there as well. There's tons and tons of charcoal earth over there. And, uh, hmm. so, so, so you haven't necessarily put a lot of research into how they may have been. No, I tried know, to so find concentrated. I have I have a list of people who who lived here, but to try to find exactly what they did back back you know in the mid to late eighteen hundreds, it's it's you know it's it's hard, right? Especially, especially with all the fires that have happened in town. Well, and it sounds like I I assume that was your wife saying, "Tell them whose house this is." Yeah. So uh, okay. so Clark, I don't know if you ever heard of Clark University. Okay. It's, it's in Worcester, um, Worcester, Mass. But the founder of Clark University was Jonas Clark. Um, you know, he was really, really big in my town and everything. And he actually built our house back back in the day. Um, oh wow! Yeah, wow. yeah. So that he is actually, cool. Yeah, yeah. He donated our library. That's that's here in town now. He, back in the eighteen hundreds, he you know he he had the library built and everything for the town and. Um, you know, now, he's, did, did you know that when you were initially purchasing the home or is this something you found out after the fact, like were, were you enthralled with history and, and you found that out in the purchase of your home and you're going, Oh yeah, that's a purchasing point. We got to buy the house now. Well, I called my house the money pit, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, I think, I think it was just the Clark's. Because there was, there was, uh, I think it was more so the Clarks own the house is what was more or less said before. Um, Jonas Clark's name came up. I didn't know exactly who he was, 
Um, oh, okay. But the Clarks lived in my house until 1950s, late 50s, I think it was. There was still a Clark living here. And mm. so, they, I mean, they lived here for 150 years or whatever. So you kind of found this all out uh, after the fact, so to speak, putting two and two together. Yeah, yeah, more or less. You know, we, I mean, yeah, Jonas Clark, who's that? You know, and then it's after you talk to people in town and see his picture up in the library and the town, you know, town uh, offices and stuff like that. It's like, okay, hey, that's who built my house. And then you you find out more and more and more information and, you know. Right. So. Maybe start to network with some of the rest of the community. Maybe it opens up some uh, possibilities of places to hunt. Yeah. Oh yeah, I I talk to yeah. That's one thing. I talk to everybody anywhere at any time about metal detecting. I I I don't know how it always just comes up, but it's the easiest thing to bring up in any conversation out there, and uh, and that opens up a lot of uh, possibilities of of permissions. Is just just talking talking to people and and uh, mentioning that you do metal detecting and and stuff like that and and oh uh, absolutely. I've, one. I got I, I got five permissions at that uh, that setup that I did in town for uh, the hist- with the historical society, and everybody was saying I should do my own tent, and and you know, and just right. promote promote myself and stuff like that. And I, I said, well, I might, you know, I got five permissions today. I might I might have to do my own tent, you know. Yeah, so it's, absolutely. It's, I mean, some time back we we had actually done a show specifically dedicated to permissions with Connecticut Todd because he he's done the uh, the presentation on it at Bone before and he does such a good job with it and that was one of the big things is you know bring it up in conversation network let your friends and family and and the other people you know coworkers acquaintances whatever what you do and you never know how many doors that's going to open you never know unless you ask either, and you might get ten no's, but that one yes might be the dream permission, you know. <laughs> right? Just, yeah, Copper Hill. <laughs> yeah, Copper Hill. Copper Hill was owned by the Clocks for a long time, and and that that land was cleared out when the town was formed, and it was never, never, ever. There was never a house put on it. There was gardens and farm animals and different things done, but there was never a house put on it until I think the late seventies. 1970s wow and, uh, but yeah yeah so i mean that's you know that's a good possibility as to why there was you know i found what 19 coppers a two real a, um i found a silver dime of everything except for a you know a cap bust and and so it, it's i mean there, there was there's just so once it gets hate again uh you know i'm gonna be going back over there Freaking scanning it low and slow, right? The day the day it gets hey, those guys can't won't be able to get the freaking bales out fast enough. Lou's gonna be over there. <laughs> yeah, I see Dirks in the chat from uh, Washington as well. Welcome aboard. Uh, <clears throat> so, how you said it was nineteen coppers off of that hill? Yeah, I think it's. I think it's. I'm pretty sure it's nineteen so far. I didn't see it in the chat, but I'm sure somewhere in there somebody just typed in, you so suck. <laughs> Sorry. That's why, that's why that everybody, I didn't come up with Lucky Lou. That's just what I was nicknamed. Oh, yeah, that's that's a good point. How did you get the name? Who gave it to you? I, You know what? I don't even know. I Since, since Bone... Uh, you know, and digging with still when I started digging with people and, and more and more, di- you know, they, they, I, I don't even remember who, who started calling me Lucky Lou or how it stuck or anything. So you, uh, you certainly liked the experience of the organized hunt and being able to meet and network with other people and everything because you would. Like you said, you met Doug, you met Steph. I'm sure you you interacted with a number of other diggers there, and it sounds like you've got plans on on doing pound the ground as well. So it sounds like no regrets in that aspect, other than maybe uh, doing it sooner. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, no, because everything happens for a reason. And maybe I wasn't maybe I wasn't ready. I don't I don't uh I don't really live with regret or anything like that. So um I you know, maybe it was just that time was perfect and you know, it was a it was a good good moment in life to to start doing it with people and that's what I that's what I look at it. You so know? no uh no what ifs or I should have or I could have or anything oh. like that. No, nope, not even close. Not I, I. None of that goes on in this life. <laughs> nice, nice. Look, well, and- every every single thing in the forty three years of my life right now has led up to this exact moment. I am doing a podcast with Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's 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 great to be like you said. Some of the and and I've mentioned it before too. Some of my probably the the best things that I've found being involved in the hobby and the podcast and everything are the people that I've gotten to meet and hunt with, or or the memories that I was a part of, or helped to create, or the people that I've helped. It, it's not necessarily the finds; they are the finds, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, I drove out, I, I chatted with, uh, in, in Hilltown Diggers Militia and Western Mass Metal Detecting Forum, uh, groups on Facebook. I drove out to Deerfield Mass. It's an hour, 15 minutes away from me. Met a couple guys I never met before and we went and did door knocking. <laughs> and I, I was two for two on permissions. And, you know, but I drove out, met him. I'd, I'd only talked to him. I talked to one of them on the phone and stuff. And, and, you know, I'd only chatted with him through Messenger and Facebook and stuff like that. And, you know, so I, I, I took the opportunity to, to go out and meet a couple more people and, and dig in some place that I, you know, might, I may never dig at again. I mean, who knows if I'll ever drive out to Deerfield and do some digging again, you know? And, uh, I mean, I drove down to, Steph's neck of the woods down in Connecticut and, and did door knocking down there. And, you know, just so that I could get the hell away from where I'm always digging and, and, <laughs> and dig, and dig with other people. You know, I, I you know, I'm going to go up. I want to, I'm, I'm dying to get up to, to go dig with Ed up in uh, Vermont, you know, what, what, wherever. And, uh, and, so he's, I've, I've been chatting with him and stuff to try to get up there and, and do some digging with him. And, and so, you that know, that sounds I, like that would be a good time. Oh, it will. It will be. It, it's going to be happening soon, sooner than late. I can tell you that maybe, right. maybe, next, maybe next weekend. So, well, and that, that's one of the things I noticed. Uh, like I even mentioned in, in the post today when I dropped the link, Did, have you ever wondered whatever happened to let's just go out and have fun? And yeah. that seems to be exactly where you're at. You know, it, I don't care what's found, let's just get out there and have fun. Yeah, that's all that matters. You know, if you, if you, if you, if you're not having fun doing it, then why, why are you doing it? There's just right. there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to to be spending hours and hours doing something you ain't having fun doing. And right when it and, starts to seem like work, suddenly it's not as fun. No, exactly, and 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 that's why. Like I don't I, I don't think I'd ever try to do it for a profit because then I would, you know, I'd just be on a mission to to get you know expensive items, and and I'd be disappointed when all I found was trash and and you know stuff like that and and so it, it i think that's part of for me at least that would just take a lot of the fun out of it right i mean don't get me wrong i find like a higley or something like that where i can pay off like my minivan and and stuff like that where if i were to sell it it'd be gone okay <laughs> right and, don't get don't don't get me wrong here, but I mean, if I found something that was worth a couple grand or you know whatever, I'm not getting rid of it. Why? It's just not worth it. But when you're talking, you know, a lot, you know, tens of thousands of dollars and stuff, where I could actually reduce my monthly bills or something to that effect, then then you know, I'm sorry, right. but it, I take a couple pictures and it's just gone. Yeah, at that point, I might be okay with just having a picture on the wall of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, with it in my mouth. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> gotta gotta do that. But <laughs> well, but yeah. and and with the way you are with the silver coins throwing them in your mouth, because uh, I'm I'm not sure 
I've I've seen quite a few of your videos, but if you ever run across like say a silver coin spill and just threw them all in. Oh yeah, they'd all go in all at the same time. <laughs> I wouldn't torture you and do them one at a time. Come on. <laughs> That'd be way too long of a video. <laughs> she's gotta she's gotta throw them all in, get it over with, clean them up. I don't want to put them in, you know, my coin hole, you know, my little my little sucrets case thing and have them get all scratched up. <laughs> I did I did just upgrade though. I got one of those little plastic flip flip top from both sides things where I can put you know, put them in on edge, and I got to just cut some start. You know, cut up some foam for them. So I did upgrade from my little tin to something else that could, you know, that could protect stuff a little bit better. Now, was was that for be for protection, or was that because of sheer volume and your tin's not big enough? No, no, my my, my tin my tin holds a lot. Stuff can attest to that. Dave can too. Uh, Doug Doug can. You know. But yeah. <laughs> My, my little, I like my little tin though. I I bought it. I bought it and I threw out all the sucrets because I don't. I don't like those. And uh, cut up some foam and put it in there. And you know, it works. It works. It works awesome. And it's small for my pouch. I don't like carrying around a backpack and stuff like that. You know, unless I mean, if I'm gonna be out for a day or something, you know, I might. I might. I got a tiny, like a uh, tiny little backpack that I saddle pack. That I bought, um, you know, and I can I can carry some more stuff in. But I just I just like my little I just got one of those little Garrett digging pouches, you know. So I don't like to keep too much stuff in it. There's always a bottle of water in it, but you know I don't ever use that to clean the silver. Right, so. that ain't for cleaning coins, so. No, that's got that's got to go in into me to keep me alive. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. And we know them Garrett pouches don't have a whole lot of room in it, so I guess the tin does work nice. How's the uh the plastic box work with it? Uh, I I I still have, you know, I bought I only got it a few days ago, and uh so I haven't act I haven't lined it yet with the foam or anything and procrastinating a little cuz I don't want to give up my tin too too quickly and <laughs> Right. Yeah, maybe who knows? Maybe maybe the tin is like your good luck piece or something. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. It's it's a possibility, you know. I don't want to change anything. Why change anything? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Absolutely, yeah. I would have to agree. And do you find yourself? It it seems like with talking to you, you seem to have evolved or or seem to prefer more or less the private uh, home sites and such, as yeah. opposed to say parks or fields. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't really, I don't really dig on public land much at all. Um, I haven't, I haven't in a long time, actually. Uh, well, no, that's a lie. I did go down to the, my, my kids, uh, school field for a little bit and just cause I wanted to go dig some, some quarters and clad and dirty monies. And, um, I did find a cool, uh, Necker chief cowboy, uh, Cub Scouts thing though. So, so that was kind of neat, but. But yeah, no, I like private. I like private home sites. Um, I tell everybody that's that's that is probably your best bet to find virgin ground nowadays. You know, with that with everybody, true. with everybody I've talked with, and and you know all these places that that just have been hunted and hunted and hunted again and stuff like that. It's like I've, I mean, I've dug this this just this year. I've dug. I don't know, at least 10 virgin sites, you know, if not more than that. It's, 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 ama you know, it's amazing how just knocking on people's doors, like I said, but just do, do a little research and, and stuff like that. And just know a couple sentences worth of information on, on the property you're knocking at. You right. Know? A lot of times it, it does seem to kind of, uh, spark the homeowner's curiosity and interest so to speak because now they're going oh wait a minute you know you mentioned this what else do you know about my property yeah don't don't be a drab don't be a downer you know if you show excitement and enthusiasm about what you do and and you know i mean like i explained to everybody how much the, I, I love history and and i love early america and and just you you just you got to take it and adapt to what they're responding back to you, 
you know, um, I've, I've, I've gotten permissions that were originally no's and after a few minutes of conversation turn into yeses, you know, right. so, or, yeah. uh, even ones where the rules change. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm still going back there and digging though. I don't, I don't care if I have to turn it all over. If I can get my name on something that goes into a museum for, you know, from a revolutionary war person, I'm doing it. So, oh yeah, absolutely. I agree. I mean, what what good does it do to leave the history just set in the ground and deteriorate? Yeah, exactly. It, it's it's uh, there, there's no no point in in that whatsoever. And I actually have one guy in town that has a, a property from 1772. He's a fifth generation owner. It's never been detected. It's 17 acres, and uh, he's got a cheap like forty dollar detector that you know he's he's almost he's got to be almost 70 and he says uh i'm gonna detect it one day i'm gonna detect it one day and so finally he went out there and he found like nine or ten square nails and another rusty item and he showed me like the stuff he found he said this is all i'm finding and uh and i you know i told him i got two detectors you know i got the ace 400 at pro i told him i'll let him use at pro and uh he can keep everything i don't even want to keep anything just i want to see, i want to see what's in his ground he let me do this tiny area and i found a kg i found uh two dandy buttons a flying eagle scent um a couple musket balls a wicked sweet silver solid silver spoon and like you know he he wanted the he showed super fascination with the musket balls and the and the spoon and so he you know i i let him have those i was thinking that you know he was going to let me come back and and do a little bit more and stuff and nope that was it and uh and and i only did a small area you know maybe 20 by 20 area if that and i found all i mean, i found so much stuff and uh and the last i go i go there every month or so and and just if, when he's outside it's like hey what's going on when are you going today the day you're gonna break down and let me detect you know and you know <laughs> no he says you got to catch me on a weak moment you know and so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep trying to catch him on a weak moment and uh and you know like i i this this there's so much stuff in his land i can guarantee you and uh and he can have it all for all I care. I, I just, I like, I just want to go dig it because it'd just be fun, you know. So, so there, there are people who say no and they just will not let you. And, you know, I told him, I said, listen, you do realize that one day you are going to pass away. I'm still going to be alive, and the new homeowner is going to let me dig everything that you didn't, <laughs> and you're not going to be able to see it. <laughs> so you're you're pulling out all the stops definitely yeah. staying persistent yeah well you got to you got to but even no's can turn into other yeses if you if you if you have somebody who says no always ask um you know do you any do you know anybody who might actually let me do some detecting on their land and i've had i've had that happen you know whereas it was it was a no but i got I got a couple other names and, and addresses and stuff like that, and I went and knocked, and they said yes. So nice, or maybe even the other way around, like with the example of the guy that he's just going, "No, you're going to have to catch me at a weak moment." Maybe you get permission for somebody that knows him, and after you're done with their property, they say something to him as well. Yeah, yeah, that didn't work. Oh. I do. I do have permission with somebody who goes and hays his land, and he just hayed it two days ago. And uh, <laughs> I even, I even said, "Listen, tell him you won't hay his land unless you let me, unless he lets me detect there." And uh, and so, just joking, you know, jokingly and stuff, he 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 said that to him, and he said, "No, tell Lou he still can't come down." <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't blame a guy for trying. Yeah, you know, a for effort. But you just shake those ones off and you just keep moving along and knocking away. And, you know, for somebody like me, I don't, I don't dig cellar holes. This past winter was the first winter I've ever dug in the woods. Like I never even, I'd never even dug in the woods before, you know? And, uh, and so I gave it a whirl because the, you know, yards and fields were frozen and I still wanted to detect. And I was, you know, everybody's like, Lou, you got to go in the woods. And I, so I, so I did and I found a couple of coppers and, 
some I found a few Indian heads and a bunch of horseshoes and like I mean all different stuff and that was just that was not at cellar holes that was just woods of people's properties that I had permission on you know and uh, and so now doing a little more planning you know I, I got a couple properties that you know abut like you know 1770s properties that I could go hit in the you know in the woods in the winter time and stuff like that so gonna go check it out over the winter and and see if i can score anything out of the ground at those sites nice i broke i broke two diggers though i i I was such a fiend that uh i was chopping through the the layer of permafrost and broke one digger and so they they the men the the people replaced that for free and then i bought i bought another one on amazon for a short you know quick uh because I got the Amazon Prime, so I could get it in two days. And uh, right, a so, quick replacement to get you by. Yeah, yeah. And so I broke that two days after I got it. Oh. <laughs> and I said, and so then I was like, all right, I'm done until the ground thaws, because I, I can't break any more of these damn things. It's going to cost too much. Right, this is getting expensive. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but but yeah. So learn learn my lesson about the whole frozen ground stuff and uh, and digging in the woods and. You know, when when enough's enough. I mean, I I did get a uh, like I said, I got that mass copper. I dug the dug through like an inch or two of uh, ice to get down to it. I I got a uh, what is a 1798 draped in, in a different field, digging through digging through the the frozenness. Um, so, I mean, I did I did find some cool stuff, so it was worth it, but. It's probably about the only thing that'll get me to go outside in the cold, though, because I don't, <laughs> I don't like the cold, and you know, dressing dressing up nice and warm to go out do some detecting. I don't mind the cold. Right. Yeah. That's absolutely. Just, that's dedication. That's all it is. Yeah, determination, dedication, perseverance. Yep. But it sounds like you're doing great with the uh, the landowner permissions and everything, which is awesome. I mean, some people just don't have the knack for it, but you certainly have the gift for talk. And, uh, you know, the the way it sounded there earlier in the chat, it doesn't matter if there's anybody around to talk to or not. You'll just carry on with yourself. Yeah, I talk to the porcupines and the deer and the rabbits and I see snakes and, I, you know, turkey vultures. And, I, you know, I always talk to all the animals when I'm by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's all just part of having a good time and we've it. seen the uh the photos and and the uh the little video clips that you post on some of the facebook groups and stuff we see you in quite a few of steph's videos you seem to be a a recurring appearance there uh, have that's you just given... a recurring nightmare that's all <laughs> it's just a recurring nightmare <laughs> have, have you given any thought to starting your own youtube channel well, I I made a YouTube, uh, Lucky Lou Detecting. I have nine subscribers. I have no videos, and uh, I'm happy with that. I got nine subscribers. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's better than I was doing when I started out. I had to have a few videos up at least before I had that many subscribers. I I don't. Yeah, I mean, if I did, I, like, I mean, I I might put out a video a year. Like, I don't know. I I just. When I'm out digging and stuff, like I want to, I want to recover it, save it, put it, you know, put it in my pouch and go on to the next thing. Right. You, you, know? you seem to strike me as the type of, you know, well, I'm all right if someone wants to put a video clip in their video of me or something, but yeah. I just don't have time to carry a camera and take video clips and then edit it and everything. I'm out there to have fun and and recover history. Yeah. Yeah, and I—I I mean, I have my own business and stuff, and you know, I got wife and kids, and like, I—I just—I—I I don't even think I could put in the time to make videos, you know. So, I mean, it I probably can, could. But, it can you know. be time consuming, but then again, with uh, platforms such as Facebook, it makes everything so much easier for some of us. Yeah, yeah, you know, I I said to Steph, I said, and I'll I'll, I'll, do, I'll guest star in anybody's uh, video. Well, I don't know about guest star, but guest <laughs> person, uh, uh, and and be goofy and you know myself and stuff like that. And I'll drive I'll drive anywhere 
more or less to to help people get permissions too. You know, if if somebody, you know, I've uh, I'll like I mean, like I said, I drove down to to, to Steph's place down in Connecticut just to try to get her permissions. You know, that was basically the goal of the day was to score permissions that she could go back to and 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 Nick go back to or whatever and and uh you know I mean there's there's one that's hundreds of of acres of cornfield that she can go back to anytime she wants and I I mean oh it's that's most, awesome it's most likely been detected before but I found that kettle point there you know freaking well, so just because yeah. it's been detected before though doesn't mean that they find everything no no not at all so so you know, I, I I mean, I'll gladly drive anywhere to do some private door knocking and stuff like that. Hang out and detect for the day, and once I'm gone, you go back to that site. You save everything in that ground. That's and that's, that's the only thing that I ask. And apparently, <laughs> on that permission, Steph says you were rewarded with a uh, bucket lister. Yeah, my kettle point. Nice. For, Yep, that was I. I you know it's you know it's horrible though. <laughs> Don't tell anybody this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I freaking I I'm up on the top of this mound and we're we we we're going down this hill and swinging away and stuff. And I see this big mound and I'm like, ah, you know, I want to go climb up that. And uh, so I'm up at the top of it and this damn thing sounded like crap. And so I dig it and I'm like, and they're way far away from me. And, uh, and I'm like, oh man, I got a kettle point. I got a kettle point. And so I'm yelling down to him. And, and I think Steph said, I, she thought I said, I got a coin. I got a coin or something. And I'm like, and so I did a, I did a cartwheel with it in my hand. And, uh, and I, I bent the bottom corner of it a little. It didn't break though. I bent it back when I stood up and I was like, oh no, I just bent the. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next time when I do a cartwheel or a handstand or something, I got to make sure I don't have the item in my hand. Right. Throw throw it in your box or your mouth or something. Yeah, Although, yeah exactly. Although, you know. probably, probably not a good idea to be doing cartwheels with a kettle point in your mouth. Well, you know, I take that over my hand. <laughs> well, yeah. And I see that Dirk happens to mention, too, that he really likes the logo, the uh, the image that we the thumbnail that we used for the show tonight that you had sent me. And he wants to know if those stickers are available. Uh, I, I mean, I got like 20 of them. I can, you know, if he wants to message me, I is, is he a sticker collector? Uh, I'm you guessing know. so. Yeah, I mean, if he wants, I, I can, I can, I can sh- mail one to him if he wants one. I, you know, I, I mean, I know, I know, uh, Dig Dug wants one because he already threatened me if I, if I got rid of them all and he didn't get one. So, <laughs> oh, well, you know, that's the guy that's going to help clear that ground. So you want to make sure yeah. he gets one. Well, he comes up, he's going to get one, but that's all thanks to, the, to, uh, Ken Dig, you know, for making those for me because, I give him all the I give him all the credit in the world for for doing that. My sister actually has one on the back of her RV, which is now down in Alabama. So, so my sticker made it to Alabama, nice. driving driving all the way down the East Coast and everything. So <laughs> nice. So now it's it's seeing it's seeing more country than you are. <laughs> yeah, and I know like uh, Sean, um, I forget his last name. He, he he just posted a thing saying, you know, if you got a sticker, send him one. So I figured I'd send him one because he's got a big old huge sticker collection. So, you know, nice. Yeah, I mean, once they're gone, they're gone. I don't, I don't have. I have to get Kendall to uh, send me a link so I can make some more. Right, limited <laughs> edition. Yeah, oh, absolutely limited edition. Those are cert- those are super special stickers. So. <laughs> well, it it is like I said. It's 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 a very nicely done logo. It definitely screams Lou. Now, what's what what's crazy, and I'm pretty sure he remembered this is the 1834 half dime that's on there. I actually found one of, and so, and I know I told him that I found an 1834 half dime. It's the only you know cap cap dime the cap coin i found and so uh so i i i pretty sure that coin is intentionally in 1834 on on the right. sticker it's 
You right, know, really so. paying attention to detail there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I just love that it says, "What's the day without digging?" I mean, that was to me. To me, that was just awesome, you know. And then, then silver in the mouth. I mean, it made it just so much better. Right. Yeah. It, it definitely fits you very well. Yeah. So every single post that I post now, I you know, I I, I do use that line. I think I'm gonna have to trademark it or something. And, and uh, <laughs> there you go. Hey, what's a day without digging something? You know, I mean, go out and I don't care. I I, I go out my yard and try to find stuff, even though I've done my yard like six times now. I still I still, if I'm home and just not doing anything, I'll I'll break out the detector just to go try and dig something up. Right. Yeah. You never know. You may still squeak something out. Yep, you never know. Nothing wrong with that. Well, we have certainly kept you on for a while. Before we go, would you like to let everybody know how they can find you? Yeah, well, I'm, uh, you can find me on Facebook. That's about it. Uh, or actually, I do have Instagram. I got Lucky Lou Detect on Instagram, too. Um, I just started that up for, for giggles and grins because um, everybody seemed to have, a, have an Instagram. And so I was like, hey, what? <laughs> Why not? I might as well just make one, you know. So I've been I throw pictures up here and there on on that and uh but yeah, just Facebook, I'm in Awesome Relics New England, uh All Metal Militia, Stealth Diggers, Central Mass Metal Detector, and Metal Detector Massachusetts, Hilltown Diggers, uh Western Mass Metal Detecting, uh, Diggers of Massachusetts, uh, <laughs> you know. So, so if you're and any, if you join any one of those groups, or you know, I, I'll, you'll you'll see me posting stuff. Awesome Relics New England is the first uh, group that I'll post anything in. Um, and so, if you you know, if you join that group or look in that group, you'll see posts from me. You can message me on Facebook and stuff like that. So the presence is definitely strong in the New England area. Yes, yes. The force is strong with this one. (laughs) Nice, (laughs) nice. Well, you have definitely been a pleasure to speak with. And I just, I don't know. It's it's very refreshing to see that, that attitude of, you know, let's just get out there and have fun because a lot of people have turned this into such a competitive hobby that well it, it it's kind of like an oxymoron because once it's competitive it's not necessarily a hobby anymore we're not necessarily having fun yeah no it's it's nobody nobody should ever think of it as a competition um you know any any time like for even like my birthday dig for instance you know, the only thing I wished was that everybody left with cool stuff, you know, and, and, and that's it. It, it, it doesn't matter if somebody found a silver coin, a copper coin or a, a, you know, shoe buckle frame or, you know, anything. It's just cool when everybody finds stuff, you know, and, and uh, nobody's, I've never, I've never even looked at it as a competition at all. And, you know, I hope, I hope nobody does. And, it's it's literally just you know go out and have some fun enjoy the fresh air you know hang out with people and and that's it you know make memories nice. yeah yeah absolutely i would have to agree and and you're definitely on a roll with it you're doing well uh i can see you certainly picking up a following and continued <laughs> success with it you'll have to keep me posted on what that uh what that copper total is come the end of the year Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you, you'll see the post, man. You'll see the post. I'm sure. I, I'm not bashful. <laughs> exactly. One of the one of the other reasons that that it just it made sense, you know. Hey, I gotta get this guy on the show. I mean, I know he's gonna talk, and and that that helps so much when the guest actually has something to say. Listen, I told you to, to reserve at least three hours for me. We're only an hour and a half in here. We got at least an hour and a half more talking to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to say right. that for another show. Yeah, <laughs> it's, exactly. I was going to say, we're we're still carrying on, and we're an hour and a half in with no dead air. So we may have to, uh, we may have to set some time aside and get you back on the show again. 
Yeah, oh, I'll I, I, I have plenty to talk to talk about. Right, I'm sure. Well, hang in there with me for a few minutes, and we'll get on out of here then. Uh, All right. Thank sure. you, for, thank you for having me on, Josh. It was, uh, it was definitely fun and spectacular. I wish I could have read the. Com- I was going to try to multitask and read the comments and the, po- you know, on my phone while I was doing the Skype thing, and and I was like, nah, I'm, I'll get all confused. I lose my train of thought, and I mean that that happens too easily without trying to do that. So that's that's kind of the same thing Steph said when she was on. But uh, I'll tell you, like I told her, those those comments archive with the show so if you would like to you can always go back in after the show and scroll through the comments and you know see what everybody was saying or or not saying or whatever i'll have to i'll have to crack a beer for that one you might (laughs) want to sometimes the chat can take on a life of its own (laughs) but they are great listeners for sure so for everyone lucky lou detecting out of uh the new england area if you enjoyed the show make sure and throw us a like right here you can follow us on spreaker itunes iheart you can follow us on the ohio metal detecting channel on youtube you can follow us on the beyond sight and sound page on facebook metal detecting beyond sight and sound facebook group awesome relics group the uh all metal militia uh, metal detecting massachusetts metal detecting connecticut ohio relic hunter dirt pirates detecting the heartland the i and i group the list just goes on and on and on uh if you're on facebook you've you've seen us both on there somewhere i'm sure uh <clears throat> it's been a great time talking with lou i got uh, just a couple of things I'm going to cover with him after the show here, so I think we're going to roll on out of here for everyone else. Have a wonderful evening. Get out there, have fun with it, and try to find something if you can. Post up those pictures. You know how we love to see them. We'll catch you on the next one.